Hey everyone, did you guys know that there is a giant organization based out of Europe called Bus World? They do all kinds of bus and motor coach exhibitions all over the world, including North America. I think the next one is in Detroit in February sometime. I'll have to look up the dates. You guys can too on their website. They also have a really cool bus and coach news around the world page where you can read about headlines relating to the bus and coach industry all over the world. I mean, it's international. They also have a YouTube channel called Bus World, kind of like my channel, Motor Coach World. I'll put the link down below if any of you are interested in taking a look. Inga Baitart, who is the international communication and press manager at Bus World, reached out to me recently and added my channel Motor Coach World on their friends and media partners page. Inga lives in Belgium. She actually sent me a video regarding the proper pronunciation of the brand Van Hool after I made my last video that touched on this subject. Hi, my name is Inga and I work for Busworld in Belgium in marketing and communications. Belgium is the same country as the home country of the brand Van Hool. You probably all know it by the name Van Hool, but actually that's not correct. Van Hool is situated in the Flemish part of Belgium, so we speak Flemish. It's the same language as Dutch. And the correct pronunciation, so you, you know it from now on, is Van Hool. Inga, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to make this clip. Uh, be sure to check out Bus World's website and YouTube channel. Now, I might be making a video down the road talking more about Bus World as an organization sometime down the road. With that said, let's get on with today's video. Hey, what is going on all of you motor coach worlds out there? Welcome to another episode of Bus Nuts, Geeks and Enthusiasts. My name is James. People bring a lot of stuff with them when they travel. I mean, especially if they're traveling long distances for an extended period of time. But what if you make a living traveling? Whether you're a traveling salesman, a business consultant, airline pilot, or even a coach bus operator. I mean, if you have a job like this, Traveling becomes part of your lifestyle, which means you'll have to get used to living out of a suitcase. Well, today we're gonna take a look at just what's in that suitcase. What are the essential things that a commercial motor coach driver packs in their bag before they head out on a trip? Now guys, this is a video that I've been wanting to make for a long time. It's been on my to-do list for over a year now, and every time I came to this topic, I kept putting it off because I really had to think carefully on what I wanted to touch on. I decided to reach out to the bus and motor coach community on Facebook and ask a bunch of bus and motor coach drivers there what they think the 10 most important things they would pack into their travel bags before heading out on a trip. And you know what guys, I got some really unique and interesting answers. And for those of you who took the time to post your answers for me, thank you so much. And I really wanna say sorry if I didn't use your answer. I mean, I got so many of them, I really couldn't use them all, otherwise this video would be an hour long. But I do appreciate every one of you that uh, replied and left me an answer. So let's dive into some of these motor coach operators bags and see what's inside. Rachel Greenwell, an operator for a bus company called Eagle says, fabric steamer, dish soap. I have a separate bag of toiletries that just stay in my suitcase for travel so that I don't have to pack my home ones every time. So first of all, thank you for posting Rachel. Rachel actually makes a lot of really cool videos of her bus trips on Facebook. One of them in particular that I absolutely loved is the one where she shows how to put up a hammock on the coach bus during her layovers. Rachel, you really need to start a YouTube channel because I absolutely love your clips and if you ever do, let me know. I'll give you a huge shout out and tell people to check out your stuff. Jeannie Ann is a coach operator from, I think, DC Trails. Now, Jeannie, please correct me in the comments if I got that wrong. But Jeannie Ann says, a fan is a must for me. Sometimes the hotel room's AC doesn't work well or you just like to hear the noise like me. An extra pillow, lots of cleaning supplies, vitamins, and healthy snacks. Thanks, Jeannie, great list. By the way, I love portable fans as well. I have one on when I sleep at night right above me. It drives my wife absolutely nuts, but 
I can't sleep without a fan blowing on me. Next up is Penny Back. Penny is an operator for Empire Coach Lines. Penny says, makeup bag filled with over-the-counter Dayquil, NyQuil, gel caps, Imodium, Benadryl, Ibuprofen, fingernail clippers, Pepto-Bismol chews, at least two laundry pods and two dryer sheets in a baggie. A baggie with laundry scent beads keeping the suitcase fresh smelling. Penny, I too have a bag of pills that I take along in my travel bag. Pills to knock me out when I really need to make sure I get enough sleep before a long day of driving. Pills to keep me awake when I know I'll be driving some odd hours. And pill to keep all that exotic food that I shove down my face from giving me an upset stomach. So I get where you're coming from. Thank you, Penny. Next is Tommy Von Morrison. Tommy is a motor coach operator from a company called Brewster Travel out of Martinsburg, Ohio. Tommy says, cologne body spray always in my bag. We all have those long hot days where we're in a no idle area from time to time. I'm very lucky to have an assigned bus that only I drive 99% of the time. So most everything else important is kept on board. However, some of the things in my bag for every trip are paperwork, clipboards, tablets, paper log book, which is actually required by law, FMCSR rule book, which is also required as well, some over-the-counter meds like ibuprofen, Aleve, Benadryl, Tums, etc., and an extra phone charger are my most important things to me. Also, soon as I park my truck, I put my personal keys in my bag and they remain there until I get back to the shop. I never carry them around. I never really thought about it, but it does really make a difference when you have a permanently assigned coach bus. If I had a permanently assigned coach bus, I'd probably leave a lot of the larger bulkier items on board that I would otherwise never bother to bring with me, like a lawn chair or skillet to cook my own meal. So thank you, uh, Tommy, appreciate that. Next is Jack Kaufman. Jack is from a company called Timmy Tours out of Moequa, Illinois, which is actually not too far from me. Jack lists plastic silverware, nothing worse than getting to your room with food and realizing that you don't have utensils. Uh, Ram, phone mount, uh, Garmin, GPS, AirPods, shocks, Bluetooth headphones, sleep mask, reclining lawn chair, two days worth of clothes even if it's a day trip, candy, lots of candy, basic tools for simple repairs. Well, thank you, Jack. I used to pack my own plastic silverware as well until one of my viewers, Mark Keeler, hooked me up with one of these, check it out. Uh, I think this is something every motor coach operator needs, especially if you're a long haul driver. Aaron Holiday, a driver for Peoria Charter Coach, I know that company, says, I always travel with a power strip and at least 10 foot of extension cords. My new favorite is a 15 foot USB extension cord. I can plug into the bus and sit outside on Canal Street in Chicago in my lawn chair for hours on end fully charged. This would be where I fess up to the lawn chair and cooler too. You know, I always regret not bringing a lawn chair when I'm out on trips, but on the flip side, I'm always too lazy to get myself to bring one before I start my trip. I just, so much to carry around. Next up is Jason Withrich. Now, I'm, I apologize if I butchered your last name. Jason, please correct me down in the description if I got that wrong. But Jason is a coach operator from Coach USA. Jason says, an extra paper logbook just in case. Yes, Jason, that is actually very important. Actually, I think it's a law. Uh, some companies like the one Jason drives for, Coach USA, uh, keeps an extra logbook on board. But as Jason mentioned in the comments, he likes to keep one in his driver's bag, regardless if there's one on the bus or not. I think that's a really good idea. Uh, thanks, Jason, appreciate the comment. Colin Fogarty. Again, I'm sorry if I butchered your name, Colin. Colin is a bus operator at Holt Peterson Bus as well as a school bus driver. And Colin says, Imodium, Advil, Tums, especially for those times that you try a new food. Colin, I I'm with you all the way. A change of clothes, pillow for those long layover naps, movies in case you get bored. I always have an extra log book as well as a notepad in case I need to write down mileage or any info. Phone chargers, Bluetooth, and the appropriate uh, chargers. Pillow is always something I think about bringing every time, but every time I bring one, I leave it on the bus and I never see it again. So, but with that said, I always regret not having one when I decide to nap on the bus while my passengers are away. So next one's from Jenny Gadzik. Now Jenny has been featured in one of my videos previously. Uh, she has a really awesome side hobby when she has downtime on a coach bus. She brings a sewing machine with her and sews on her bus while uh, waiting for her passengers. Last we spoke, Jenny was a coach operator for Lorenz Bus Service out of Minnesota. Jenny writes, in addition to most of this, I put a ditty bag in the bathroom for passengers. In this bag are individual wet wipes, 
makeup remover wipes are perfect uh, for the hotels. Tampons of various sizes and types, uh, pads of various types and sizes, little bags to put said items in the garbage so they don't get dropped in the toilet, and few other things like a little bar of soap and shampoo bottles. I also add a few hair elastics and if I have them in a vanity kit from the hotel. I put this bag right behind the curtain uh, and somewhat visible. I also keep sealed packets of soda crackers and small bottles of water for folks who have needs of said items due to low blood sugar or upset tummies. I also carry bleach wipes, gloves, tapes, duct tape, electrical tape, uh, now and scotch tape up front so that I can grab them. I have clean shop towels for floor spills, etc. as well. And Jenny also writes, I can't tell you the number of times I have folks in need of these things and there they are, no need to even ask. Uh, Jenny writes, you don't have to buy a ton of these things, just grab a few from your female friends, relatives, and throw them into a clear bag so folks know it makes a huge difference and protects people's dignity as well. Well, Jenny, you are what I would call squared away. I mean, that takes customer service to a whole other step. Kudos to you, Jenny. Also, do you still sew on the bus? Let me know down in the comments below if you watch this video. Next up is Kathy McIntosh with ECS Transportation Group. Kathy says an eight inch electric skillet and utensils. Now, Kathy, it's interesting that you said this because I will soon be doing a video on motor coach drivers and their health because let's face it, when you have a career as a coach bus operator, your health and diet takes a back seat, sometimes way in the back, all the way next to the toilet. And one of the things I was going to suggest is that drivers bring their own tools to cook their own meals. So I'm glad to see that someone actually does this. Thank you, Kathy, appreciate the uh, comment. Next up is Keith Belangi. Now, Keith, I hope I didn't butcher your last name. Uh, Keith drives for Premier Coach out of Milton, Vermont. Keith has a nice list of 10 things here. So Keith writes, one, emergency overnight supplies. For me, that's meds, glasses, contact lens case, underwear, and socks. Two, water and snacks. Three, paperwork and binder. Four, cell phone charger. Five, e-reader, Kindle. Six, AirPods. Seven, hot logic and Pyrex leftovers with more in the cooler if it's an overnight. Eight, cleaning supplies. Our coaches are stocked. What I bring is extra and fits in a melt crate along with my pressure washer. Uh, nine, lawn chair, neck pillow, blanket. Ten, Fire sticks, I don't have one yet, uh, but if I was driving full-time, I would. Uh, Keith, awesome list, my friend. You sound like someone with a lot of travel experience. Also, using a milk crate to carry things in the luggage bay is a really good idea. Next is Judy Dickinson. Uh, Judy drives for across country travel. She writes, I have a goodie bag up front with me. It's a freezer Ziploc bag that has a couple foodies, caffeine batteries, gas X chapsticks, breath mints, and other goodies. I need while driving. It sits on my side panel and gives me easy access to items I need while driving. Those who don't drive commercially, specifically passenger carrying uh, commercial vehicles, they just don't understand how confined you are when you're rolling down the road with a bus full of passengers with, what, six or more hours left to go. You, you really can't just get up to get anything, right, if you need it, uh, unless you pull over and stop, but then everyone's eyeballing you and wondering why you needed to stop uh, the whole bus to grab a bag of crackers. I mean, it doesn't look professional, but you know what? Sometimes you just need something, right? So yes, a Ziploc goodie bag is an awesome idea. So Judy, thank you for sharing that. Next up is Drew Huggins, a operator from MacArthur Coach and Tour says, good morning, sir. I saw your post uh, asking for things bus drivers carry. Uh, I always have Lysol wipes and maybe the most weird thing is I always carry a roll of weather stripping in my book bag. I can't stand the uh, wind coming in and around the door, especially in the J's. Sometimes all you need is some new weather stripping and it's quiet as a church mouth. I never realized you could fix the wind noise so easily. I mean, I need to try that next time I have a bus with a uh, noisy uh, wind leaking through the door. Next up is Joshua Trance Henley from Lewis Coach. Uh, Joshua writes, I carry portable pressure washer, red carpet, DVDs, cell phone holder, Bluetooth, and GPS. Oh, and I always keep my jacket with me. Now, Joshua, I love the red carpet thing. I'm assuming by red carpet, you're not talking about some brand name of an item, and you actually mean that you have a roll of red carpet in your bus that you bring out and roll out for your passengers. If that is the case, that is totally epic. I'm sure your passengers love that little detail. Can I steal that idea from you? I mean, what a simple way to add that one little touch of luxury and being pampered for uh, your customers. 
Next is Ed Summers. Ed's been a viewer of my channel for a long time. He's even made a trip to my office a few times to bring me a Crave case of White Castles. Ed, my staff and I love you for that, my friend. Ed is a former driver for Windy City, and he says, Barbasol shaving cream. Yes, for shaving, but mostly to use on the inside of windshields to keep the windows from steaming up. I uh, learned this from a senior driver at Windy who drove for Greyhound for 40 years. And two, a quart of motor oil uh, to put in the toilet to stop the stink. Once again, from that same senior driver at Windy. Um, has anyone else heard of this? Wow, I need to try these two things. I will say putting motor oil down the toilet of a coach bus makes me kind of nervous. If anyone else knows of these tricks, please let me know down in the description regarding how it works. Not that I don't trust you, Ed. I just wanna make sure I'm not gonna tick off my wash crew and technicians by pouring motor oil down the toilet. But if this works, I'm totally gonna try that. And also the windshield thing. I never thought of putting um, shaving cream on the windshield. So thank you, Ed. Okay, next up is Braden Lewis. Braden is with Lewis Coach and Braden says, Bluetooth earpiece of some sort, AirPods, Beats, Plantronics. I have to say, I really feel totally naked when I forget to bring my Bluetooth with me when I go on bus trips. Sometimes I even stop at truck stops just to buy another one because I can't be over the road without it. Now, just to set the record straight, it's not because I'm constantly chatting with my buddies on the phone while I'm driving a busload of passengers. I do use it for phone calls when dispatch is calling me or when I need to call a venue or a destination that my passengers are heading to ahead of time so that they're ready for us. I also use it to listen to music out of one ear sometimes. Next up is Matt Broad. I think he drives for Academy Coach. I can't make out the whole word, word there uh, behind him, but the livery on the bus looks like it's from Academy. Matt says hammock, pillow, fire stick, slides, shorts, and the other five things are food. This is my go-to for one day with lots of downtime. Multi-day trips, everything in the kitchen sink, as you never know what will come in handy. Now that's the second time I've seen Fire Stick. Is that so you can plug it into the TV on the coach and you can watch Amazon on, on the bus? I guess I would ask, can you access that via your phone or tablet if you have one, or is, or, or is the Fire Stick different from that? Um, let me know down in the comments. Well folks, that's gonna do it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I appreciate everyone that left me a comment and post to suggest what to put in the driver's bag. I wish I could have used every one of yours, but uh, this was all I had time for. Safe travels to all of you out there, and remember, if you're watching this, you are part of the motor coach world.